All right, guys, today we're going to talk about how to test and then remove the heating element in the SG Series Friedrich P tabs. Now, there's a few simple tools you're going to need in order to do this a Phillips screwdriver, cutters, bolt or ohm meter. We're going to talk about how to take the top plate and the blower guard off of the SG Series p tabs You're going to have six screws that hold the blower guard in place. You'll have four across the top that hold the plate in, and there's also one on either end on the right and left-hand side that have to come out. So I'm going to start with the blower guard, get these six black screws pulled out of here. It goes a lot faster if you use power tools. However, we're going to do this the old-fashioned way today. Make sure these guards go back in. Last thing you want is somebody dropping something down in this blower wheel. It moves very fast and it is metal. It will hurt. Once those six screws are removed, that guard lifts up and out. You can set that aside. And the next step in our process is going to be the four screws on the top and the two on the sides that hold the plate in place. You do not have to remove all four screws holding in your bracing for the shroud. Just the two on the top plate are sufficient. to here, pull this guy off and get a view of what's going on in here. All right, now with those removed, the top plate is just going to lift up at the front, slide it out towards yourself, and you can completely remove it. Set that aside as well. All right, now that we've removed the top plate and the blower guard, we're gonna take the right hand control box panel off. In order to do that, we have to take the power cord box off as well. There's three screws that hold the power box in place. Two on top, there's a third one that can be tricky that's mounted down underneath here at the bottom. When you look underneath, you'll see it right above the strain relief. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those three out. Third one on the bottom. Once that's off, the power cord door comes right off. If for any reason the power cord is in your way, it's a simple Molex plug. All you have to do is pinch top and bottom, slide it out, set it aside. Now, with that out of the way, we have access to remove the remaining screws that hold this side plate in place. There's gonna be seven of them. You've got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. So let me get these guys out of here real quick. And this will give us complete access to the electronic controls for these PTAC units. So with that removed, you can see all of the electronics in there. There are multiple control boards. There's a relay, a logic board inside this unit, your capacitors, your heater relay, and we'll need access to that heater relay most importantly, which is this big white relay mounted up here at the top. Before we start pulling that off though, we're gonna take the uh, fan motor guard off over here. In order to do that, you've just got a couple of screws that hold this guy in place, one on top, two here down at the bottom. This guard just protects the end of the coil and hides your fan motor as well as your Molex connections for your heater and your fan motor as well. 
three screws to pull out. I can pull this guy up and out and swing it over the back as well with my digital display. So now that you've removed that side plate and the guard over here on your blower, we're gonna go ahead and look. We've got our fan motor and our heater Molex connections right here on the left-hand side of the control box. The heater Molex has three wires. It's a white, a black, and a red. They're gonna be thicker gauge wires with a white protective sheathing over them. The fan motor is gonna be a uh, five wire connection down here. We're gonna disconnect it just to set it out of our way for now. But the important one we want is that heater plug right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and depress the pin for that Molex pin, and boom, there it is. So there is one side of your heating element. Now, this is just one leg. The Friedrich SG PTAX have multiple heating elements that come as a packaged kit, and depending on what power cord is applied, it's gonna decide how much of that heating element gets activated, whether it's two and a half kW, three kW, or five kW. So, some of these may not be used on your specific unit. We're gonna go ahead and ohm out all three of them though through our other leg, which also goes through the safeties. So I'm gonna show you how to get to that leg. Okay, our second leg for our heaters is gonna come from this white heat relay here. The upper right-hand corner has a black flag terminal that also has some white protective sheathing on it. And if you pull the rubber boot back, this is one of those lovely flag terminals that has a clip on it, retention clip, so you'll have to depress that to pull this guy off. Now that we have this off, we can pick our leads and we're gonna ohm from this to each one of the three wires on your heater plug to check continuity through all of the elements and safeties. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my meter and we're gonna run some tests on this real quick. All right, so now that I've grabbed my meter, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got continuity in my audible beep. Meter's good. I'm gonna go ahead and ohm this guy out. Now the resistance values are gonna vary depending on which one of the heating elements you're checking. And it also can vary depending on whether or not this is a 208, 230 unit or one of our 265 volt units. So the key point to take away here is that when we test from one lead, to the others in our Molex pin, so in this case, black to white, I've got 30.3 ohms of resistance. If I go black to red, I have 19.5, and black to black is 46.8. The specific value is not necessarily as important for this test as much as making sure that we have resistance and continuity through all of those points. If at any time one of these wires gives you no value and you read an open line or infinite resistance, that heating element is decided to be bad. So the next part of this video is gonna be how you get to and replace that heating element. Let's start there. Now in order to remove the heating element on the PTAC, we're gonna to have to take the control box and swing it out of the way. Might seem like a lot of work, but it's actually not too bad. You have two screws here at the top and one right here above your heater or uh, power cord joint that you need to remove. And we're gonna swing this box up and out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the one above the power cord. As well as the two up top. Once those are removed, your control box is gonna to wanna to lean forward and there's a tab bracket system at the bottom that it rests in. So all I have to do is pick it just straight up. Now I've got my entire control box, all my electronic controls swung to the side and I can lay it on the back on the shroud. That gives me better access to the end of the evaporator coil as well as all of the mounting brackets for this blower housing. So, we need to remove the blower housing. When we pull this out, you're gonna have your blower motor, blower wheel, as well as the heating element all in one cartridge is gonna come up and out. In order to do that, there are four screws that hold each side to the coil, 
and to the dividing wall. So first, we're going to take the two here that hold it to the evaporator coil on this end. I'm going to pull them out of the way. Now, there's also two screws that hold this housing to the dividing wall on the back. This is where that extension is going to come in handy, or a nice longer screwdriver if you have one. There is one here and one right about here towards the bottom. They hold it on a 90 degree bend to the back wall. Shouldn't be hard to miss. Go ahead and pull both those guys out. All right, so with those removed on this side, we're gonna go to the other side by the control box and we're gonna pull those out as well. So the next step is we're gonna pull the four screws that hold this side of it in. You've got one here by the evaporator and one down at the bottom. And then there are also two that hold that back wall in place as well. One above the fan motor and one right below it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those guys out. You'll notice as you loosen these, your evaporator coil has a little bit of movement in it. It can now freely kind of float. Be careful not to make any harsh bends on it as we're pulling everything out. The last thing you want to do is turn a heater problem into a refrigeration problem as we've kinked or broken a refrigeration line. four of those screws removed. The last thing I'm going to do before pulling this housing up and out is I'm going to take this discharge air thermistor here that goes into the housing but is still attached to my control box and I'm going to pull it out of its retaining clip. It just pulls straight to you and slides right out and I'm going to thread it through its hole and set that aside. Now I have everything disconnected. I can go ahead and grasp the sides of the blower housing here and I'm just going to tilt it towards me a little bit and lift straight up. Careful not to damage the coil. And I'm going to pull this whole heating element straight up and out and set it aside. So, this is our blower housing. You've got your blower wheel here. There's your heating element with both its high and low limit switches as well as the fan motor and their harnesses all came out as one piece. Very easy, very clean. Now in order to take this heating element out, there are three screws on either end plate here that hold it in place and then the heater just slides forward. Now if you have a bad heating element, whether it's one element or a limit that's failed, you have to buy an entire heating kit. Friedrich does not sell individual limits or individual heating wires to be able to retrace. I'm going to go ahead and pull those three screws and we'll pull this heater out. One, we'll do this side here. On the right hand side by the motor, there's also a protective plate that goes over the outlet for your harnesses. It just clicks into place. Once I loosen the screws, that guy will pop off with me here. And there it is. Now that I've removed all of those, I can simply grasp the heater and pull towards myself and then slide the wires through the hole. And now you have your heating element removed. Now if you have your replacement heater, you're gonna do the exact same process in reverse and you'll be able to rebuild this unit, finish the call and get on to the next one.